The following interview was conducted with M Miguel Angel Rivera, I pronounce it correctly, President of Multicultural Greek Council for the Purdue University Oral History Program. It took place on Thursday, April 29, 2010, in Stewart 263. The interviewer is Catherine Marquis, the Oral History Librarian. Welcome and good morning, and thank you, Miguel. I appreciate that. Thanks for Tell us me. a little bit about where you were born and parents and siblings in your early years. Uh, my mom and dad are both uh, coming from Mexico, so uh, they met in Chicago, and I was born there. I'm from Hammond, Indiana. Uh, I have one younger brother, and we did all of our high school and uh, right down the street from where we lived in Hammond, Indiana. Okay, tell us a little about grade school and also in high school, any activities and things? Okay, uh, grade school, um, I started off just being, it was actually kind of hard. I didn't really uh, speak English that well growing up, so I had to take bilingual classes. Um, it was uh, Spanish your? Yeah, Spanish is my first language, okay. and my grandmother was my babysitter, so she only spoke to me in Spanish. So I didn't learn English until the middle of first grade. Um, so it was kind of hard getting that, but once I got the hang of English, I ended up doing really well in school, and uh, just that must got, have been a, that must have been a challenge. Yeah, well, in kindergarten it was it was scary just because you would only understand every fourth or fifth word that the teacher would say to you. Uh, you knew when she was talking to you because she would mispronounce your name, but that, that was about it. Um, and then you, uh, the the classes got better. You were able to start. Or I, I was able to start reading better, and then um, it was really interesting because by the time I went to third grade, my reading apparently gotten so well that they asked me to go back to kindergarten and read to all the students. So uh, I really put in the effort, I guess. Um, That's kind of a feather in your cap. Yeah. Third grade, it sounds very good to me. Yeah. So I got really involved uh, from the beginning. Um, in elementary school, I was always involved in um, mathathons and uh, science Olympiad programs like that. Uh, and then middle school, I just kept continuing with it. When I got to... Um, what high school did you go to? I went to Hammond High School. Okay. It was just right where we lived. Um, I was involved in a lot of different things, actually, when I reached high school. I did the, the foreign language clubs. Um, I tried out for debate team, but I wasn't really interested in it, so I kind of left that. Um, Science Olympiad again, Super Bowl, spelling, spelling bees. I participated in some spelling bees when I was in middle school. So I just stuck with that. Did you go to any, did they move on to any contest? Or yeah, I, I went to, uh, I didn't make it all the way to Washington, but I made it to the regional right beforehand, so that wasn't too bad. No, that's very yeah, good. not bad. Yeah. Um, and I was involved in uh, a lot of different just random academic programs in high school just because. What sort of course, what was your course of study? What were you taking? Were you going to college prep? Or yeah, just okay. the basic sure. academic honors diploma classes. Um, I did get involved in golf, just because I knew I needed to get a sport so I could be well rounded. And uh, I'm looking ahead to my career world, right? Yeah, the, it was, everything was just planning for the year <laughs> afterwards. So I did golf for four years. I was awful at it, but I was able to say that I played golf for four years. So I did that. I took lessons one time and never gone, haven't taken it. It's just. You should. You have to keep on. Yeah. You know. My clubs are in my basement, so <laughs> it's you and like, I will get together. <laughs> definitely, you'd probably be able to beat me. I wasn't really that good, so. Oh uh, well, after uh, high school, then uh, did you come to Purdue? How did you happen to select Purdue, or did you go somewhere else before you came here? I looked at a few places. Um, I, I got the academic honors diploma, and because of uh, my parents, I was able to get uh, a lot of financial aid with all the, the scholarships and everything that I won. So I um, I was accepted into Butler, Wabash College, and here. And You wanted to go in Indiana again? Right? Yeah, definitely. Okay. Okay. Uh, the in-state tuition was going to was gonna be the reason I was able to afford it. And I went, uh, I visited all the schools, um, but Wabash College was actually smaller than my high school. Uh, and my high school wasn't even that big. More, more, most people when I talk to a producer say that their graduating class was 300, 400 people. My high school was only 800. So when Wabash That's was all right, told, right? right all, all four classes. So when I went to a college that was smaller than that, it was definitely not what I wanted. Um, and then when I went to Butler, I liked the campus, but the diversity aspect wasn't as great. And I finally visited here, and I had a cousin that went here at the time, and she showed me a whole side of the campus that you would never be able to get on tours and stuff that the a lot of the, the tour guides I've talked to know. So uh, I chose it 
after I actually selected Purdue when I was on a, a robotics competition. I was in robotics in high school, and there was a regional here. And at the Union, there's a big model of the entire campus. And I remember just standing there. I'm like, yeah, this is for me. I have to be here. So That's, that's impressive. I mm-hmm. really like that. Yeah. When the people stop there, it's just, mm-hmm. it's really great. Yeah, and everything just keeps getting updated. And, I yeah, know, right, I love exactly, it. exactly. Yeah. It's, a, it's a good eye-catching thing. It's great for mm-hmm. visitors sometimes. Did you come to Boiler Gold Rush? Did they have that when you came? Actually, I was um, I'm did involved. Did you come for a day on campus? I, I went to day on campus. Okay. And uh, that's where I met Dr. Zanefia Evans. She's my advisor with the College of Science, with okay. uh, multicultural science programs. And they had a program that they were offering the same time as BGR, except through the College of Science. So I went to that. And uh, we, we did a lot of the programming. The BGR did, like, the tours and some of the, the work and breakout sessions. But it was more involved for... Um, retaining minority students so we did a lot of math and science classes so um it was it was interesting because i was always really into math two of my majors are math based so uh i actually was able to help the other students with their their math tutoring because all of them were starting at 153 or 154 whatever the basic and i was already advanced calc three so it was pretty cool to be able to help out a lot of friends yeah that's good Mm-hmm. Uh, then well then tell us what your major is and your extracurricular activities and then we'll move on to the multicultural. Okay. Yeah. Um, I am triple majoring in statistics, actuarial science, and management, uh, with a minor in uh, organizational behavior, human resources, and I was a class away from getting a, a minor in Japanese language and literature. Wow. Yeah. Uh, it didn't end up working out just because of the programming. There's not many classes you can take every semester so I was if I was gonna get the minor I'd have to be here another semester and I'm already on the five-year plan so we can't do that <laughs> Purdue forever right right <laughs> just professional student that's the way that my parents are seeing it now so um, involved on campus uh, since the beginning I was always just in the mindset of always being as involved as possible uh, from high school so when I got to Purdue my freshman year I joined the Latino Student Union uh, I joined the Excalibur Club with my residence hall, where I got really involved with that. And then second semester is when I joined my fraternity, uh, Delta Pi Rho, the Latino fraternity. Um, I, and as soon as I, I joined the fraternity, I got really involved with the Greek life. So sophomore year is when a lot of the people in my council started seeing me. Um, and I was able to use that to get more involved on different areas on campus. So I started getting involved with the Office of the Dean of Students, with Students Leaders Retreat, uh, Emily Mousy Vogel, their sophomore development conference. I just was able to expand as much as possible and try to get as, as much networking as I could. So I got really involved with all of those programs and all the different offices at Purdue, uh, diversity resource office, just a lot of random places. And by the time I went to, I, I actually ran for president my senior year, I think, but uh, I was beaten. So I just went back to my fraternity and just did more work there. Um, I didn't make president until just last year, but that was after joining an immense number of different organizations. I was in uh, mortar board at the National Honor Society. I got tapped into that, so that was really, really fun for me. And just a variety of different programs. I, I think Purdue has 878, and I've probably been, I've probably at least done stuff with at least 60 to 70, just Random. Wonderful. Yeah. You put that on your resume, you know, for numbers. I, I would just take up too much space, though. No, just <laughs> numbers. Select, right. as they do for public age, selective list or selection, right. you know, right. right? Okay. So, yeah, I was just, I love it here. So I've just been trying to get as involved as possible in, in everything. Right. So. Is, your, is your brother, is he ready for college or is he? Is My he little brother's ready? actually a junior here now. Oh, is he? Okay. Yeah. Okay. He, uh, he's, been, he's been struggling a little bit, but he's doing okay now. So. What's his major? Uh, he just switched to OLS, Organization okay. Leadership Supervision. So. Okay. You guys will be running your own company pretty soon, huh? We'll see. We're we'll see. The math. Let's talk about the Multicultural Greek Council. You're the mm-hmm. president and uh, some challenges and issues and programs which you may have undertaken during your term. Okay. Um, well, MGC. First, and also tell for the researchers what the council sure. is comprised of. Then. Okay. Uh, Multicultural Greek Council, MGC, is a umbrella organization uh, for fraternities and sororities of multicultural descent. Um, Purdue University has four councils, um, and ours is more for the organizations don't really fit in 
with the other ones. IFC and Panhellenic Association are your traditional house fraternities where everyone sees them on campus. NPHC, the National Panhellenic Council, is for uh, the historically black fraternities and sororities. And then we fall into the, the latter category, MDC. So we have currently 11 organizations um, of Asian descent, Latino, multicultural, um, with prospects of getting up to seven new organizations in the next three years. It's actually the fastest growing council in the nation for Greek life. So Purdue is... There are other campuses on other right. campuses as well. Right. Is, there a nas- is there a national There's a national one, but okay. each... Um, the, the national MGC is actually closed off to certain organizations. So every campus will have its own okay. different okay. council, but that's just what Purdue well, is so called, the MGC. Sure. Okay. So it's actually the fastest growing just because there's so many people trying to get to Purdue's campus, which is one of the challenges that you have to deal with. So... Um, with that, each of the different organizations works together, but is still mainly focused on trying to get their organization on top, trying to make sure that their programming is done correctly, that they're recruiting enough members and they're keeping the organization alive. So my job was to make sure that all of the 11 organizations were doing the program for themselves, but at the same time working with each other, that are working with each other, excuse me, to make sure that the campus saw that the council was doing, doing those efforts. So the more work the council was doing, the more publicity that it was giving to everyone else. Right. So a lot of the, the issues came in when um, certain organizations don't really get along with each other. When you're at a uh, campus at Purdue University, uh, I think the, the black population is 3% and the Latino is a little bit less. So there's not many people to choose from when it comes to minority organizations. So when you have two sororities of the same culture, it gets really interesting to see how they... A little tight squeeze. Right. It, it, it's really fun to see how they, like, uh, compete with each other. So you just try to make sure everyone's, you know, civil <laughs> with each other while making sure that programming is still happening and that everyone's sure. working together in the council. Right. So, uh, let's see. Just recently we had our stroll competition. And it's... Um, strolling is a, it's a choreographed dance between each individual organization. And we were able to invite schools from Indiana University and some schools as far as, I believe, Penn State came to, for this competition just last week. Um, and it took a lot of programming just because we wanted to make sure that we were getting a room that was able to fit all these different schools that were coming. Usually we just have something in Matthews 210, which only holds, I think, 201 people. Yeah. So uh, programming is really, really hard to do when uh, towards the end of the school year when everything's swamped and everything's packed to be able to try to get a place that's big enough for everyone to be there so we didn't actually get fowler hall until i think two weeks before the actual show so it it, everything just fell through together it was it worked out really nicely but uh some of the issues were just making sure that everyone's working together to get the events looking right um internally the the pro there's not many problems everyone does what they're supposed to do everyone does their programming and everyone wants to work with each other because you don't want to be the organization that no one likes so everyone does that the only hard part is putting that image externally to the campus so that way everyone sees that this council is actually doing work so just constantly making sure that you're getting your your name out the organizations are doing well and improving upon it like one of the goals that we have definitely for next year is, is uh, academics if every council gets their grades released and this year we are the bottom of the four so uh, we're trying to raise every organization's grades up a little bit to try to make sure that we're not that's a big challenge right? yeah it's a, it, and definitely not an issue, but that, that's good right that's and it's, it's a bigger issue just because like i said there's not many people to be in these organizations some of these organizations have two to three members wow. a, pre- a president and a treasurer but then each of those also has the social aspect, the academic aspect, the alumni, the networking with everyone else. So you're doing the work of six people for one position or for one person, and it, it gets to be too much. That's why we try to make sure that organizations are staying here because we want them to be here. Sure. So it's it's just an issue for the smaller organizations not having as many people involved to be able to still perform the way that the large organizations. The council, would. you have other. You're the president. Are there others on the council too yeah. that help? Okay, that yeah. so that. the board is actually okay. nine people. So the executive board is myself, the vice president, secretary, treasurer, and then the academic chair. And then we have other chairs for programming with with the campus, like fundraising, philanthropy, socials with other organizations, and uh, a recruitment just for 
events where incoming freshmen come or uh, programs like that, we have someone that's in charge of making sure that we're there to be able to talk to them. Good. Well, that's nice. What about leadership? Your thoughts on a leader's role in the academic and professional world? Okay. Um, I think that it's important to be able to be that person that everyone confides to, that everyone goes to. However, sorry. Um, it's also important, though, to be able to stand back and let people do things for themselves. I was, uh, I, I didn't get to be president by being in charge of everything. That's, I, I actually think that's the reason I lost uh, the first time I ran, is because I was, I went into the meeting saying, this is a plan that I have for the entire year. I think that if we do this, we'll be able to accomplish this. And everything was, it made sense. Everyone agreed that it was, it was a good plan, but no one wants to be told what to do all the time. So a leader, I think, is important to be able to have a balance of both taking charge when he needs to, but then letting people do the work and finding out things for themselves. So that's that. I, I think that's developed how I how I lead people now. I don't always take charge, but I'll just be there behind them to make sure that they're doing something. If they and if I'm there for help and they need my help, then I'll be there. Right. But it's hard to convey that, but it's very key right. in order to make the thing the operation. Right. I think one of the the hardest things to do is help someone without them knowing that you're helping them, letting them do it for themselves, taking the credit and, you know, feeling good about it without them knowing that you were there and had a hand. So, exactly. yeah. It took a while to learn that, but I think that's it's one of my... It's a very good trait, and it, yeah. it's, it's, uh, it'll serve you well as you go through life, I think. That's the plan. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> um, did you go... The, uh, the thing on the President's Forum where Keith Crock talked, have you heard Keith Crock talk at any time or met I've him? I've heard him speak before, but I wasn't okay. at that forum. Uh, the, the challenge, the process, search for opportunities... He had a couple of comments on some of the things that he, he raised in that. Uh, if you pick up any of those, any comments that you have on those the leadership things that Keith would yeah, talk about. Yeah, the, the shared vision. Right, just yeah. One of the, like, what, what I was saying, it's not, you, you shouldn't just have the goals. You want to make sure that everyone is with you in those goals. If you're leading only two people, it's not as, as powerful as if you were be able to convince everyone in your organization to help sure. join you. So... One of those, I, I definitely agree with the shared vision. And then that that goes, again, with his enabling. Right. That's yeah, every, everything's intertwined. Up, everybody, yeah. they're intertwined, but everyone picks up on that, particularly to enable others to act, which, yeah. you, which you shared. Right. And all of them are, you know, kind of key, I think, and I know he has some other things, too. So, mm -hmm. uh, um, did you Have you been to any of the mortarboard leadership classes? Uh, I'm a fifth-year student. And I've been to all of them except my freshman year. My grandma yes. passed away the weekend before, so I had to go and be a Paul Bear. Uh, then you were the one, the providing sustainable solutions for tomorrow's leaders. Can you make any comments on that? Yeah. Um, were they, and do they vary from yes. year to year? Yes. Okay. Uh, I was actually part of the mortarboard class last year. Okay. So I was a returning member this year, and I was able to see the differences. Uh, last year was completely different than any other year before. Uh, my friend, he, he was actually the, the chair that was in charge of it. He was, he brought in speakers, none of which were from Purdue, all of which were really, really involved with blogging and, and the, the internet. And it was just a new, it seemed like a revolutionary way of having this leadership conference, the anything is possible thing. And it worked out really well. I think we had 400 people in attendance. It, it, was, it was a really impressive, conference and this year uh, the chairs they they saw what our what our class did and they tried I'm not gonna say they didn't do as well but they did it just differently they, they, were, they were more format. right okay. they they wanted President Cordova to be the keynote and Keith Brock to be the keynote those, those were the two keynote speakers and then they brought in people from different positions at Purdue University so whereas our class did everything externally and broader um, right. broader ideas, this year's class was more focused on Purdue and the sustainability aspect of Dr. Cordova's seven, or strategic plan. Right. So it was just okay. a different way of getting about it. But yeah, it was a, it was a good conference. Good. Yeah, and the, 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 the attendance were, sounds very good. Yeah, yeah that's right. Um, how about a uh, favorite Purdue tradition? Do you have a tradition? I have tons of Purdue traditions well, that ahead. I love. Go ahead. You don't, I always oh, say, no. they say, can you have more? Okay, on some traditions. Okay. The more the better. Yeah. Okay. Uh, we have a lot. <laughs> yeah, there's, there's always something to do with this campus that I've, I've always enjoyed. <laughs> um, one of my favorite things to do, I'm not sure if, uh, as many people know about it, but outside of CL50, there's a tree 
that always gets uh, painted at night with the different colors of different organizations. And I've been able to paint that tree four times already. It's one of my favorite things to do um, just because it's it's all dark and everyone's scared because people might find you. It's just like a really fun, fun, exciting time with, with your fraternity brothers or sorority sisters that you're able to share. <laughs> so we, we, I've been able to do that a few times and I've, I really liked it. Uh, the Boilermaker special, writing it on Fridays is, is awesome. Uh, fountain runs. Um, the milkshakes at Pappy's. I'll just go there after a class and just go for just sitting there listening to the nickel scent uh, jukeboxes. Right. Um, let's see. Uh, the Ross Save football games, uh, camping out. I mean, everything is just always, there's nothing not to love about this campus. Everything I've always been really into. And uh, the flicks at Fowler where they have movies in Slater Hill just in the beginning of the year. Um, Mass on the Grass with uh, the St. Tom's. Tom's. Yeah, right. everything. There's just always something different to see. Bug Bowl, Grand Prix, everything. I, I just love it all. So that's probably why I took the extra year, just to share it all How again. How about, uh, you talk about Ross, the, when the alumni band comes, you know, the, the mm. blue band and the alumni band can say, they're always sort of interesting yeah. to, to I, see. I worked with um, Dr. Cordova and President Jiski when he was still here. I was in their suite for the football games. Okay. So I've been able to meet a lot of alumni that have come in. Like, I was able to meet Neil Armstrong when he came for the, the opening of the building. So it's just... I've been That's able to see great. a lot. Yeah, I've been able to see a lot while I was here. Did and you get a chance? Did you chat? Did you chat with him? I talked to him a little bit, but he was more. I, you could kind of tell that he just didn't want to be. Everyone was so bothering him that that entire weekend. He just wanted to watch the game in <laughs> peace. So I was like, "All right, you go ahead." He, and he did the flag too. Yeah. He, uh, at, you know, yeah. shout. Nope. You know, it's interesting on that shout because when I'm at the game, people or visitors or things, they they don't quite. Right. Get, get, get it, and particularly the visiting team, where there will be, and it's interesting to watch their. I mean, I think it's great. Right. But some even there's some visitors sitting around, and they're not real sure just what all this is about. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So it adds it adds a nice dimension. Right. Yeah. Or the the chance that that uh, the students the paint crew will do with the basketball game when another team's person is ejected or after so many fouls they'll do the left right left right sit down. <laughs> no one knows what that is, but it's still really funny to watch. So. Oh, how about, uh, do you have an outstanding event that you think mm. of? Let's see. Um, just because I've been involved in a lot of different sure. organizations, there's a lot of big events that always stand out to me. Um, for MGC, it's there's the Stroll Competition, just a big organization, uh, or a big showing of all the organizations that they have to offer. NPHC, the National Black Fraternity Sororities, has... Uh, the step competition, where their their organization will all step and it packs out one of the one of the rooms in the ballrooms sure. or, or Fowler. Um, I was involved with, with mortar board, so tapping is always one of my favorite days, where we get to initiate the new or we get to tell the new members that they've been tapped into the organization. So we'll interrupt classes and sing to them. So that's one of my favorite things that we were, were able to do. Um, just a lot of different things with Latino or with the Latino Cultural Center. There's um, Dia de la Familia, where we come, where families come, and some of our, our brothers or a lot of different organization members will uh, dress up as clowns or Superman just for the little kids and do face painting. It's just nice super, things. Yeah, a, a variety of just different things. So, yeah. Good. There's always something to look forward to. Right. How about the next stage? For you? <laughs> Can tell us oh, what yeah. you're looking forward to. I, I'm, looking, I'm looking for a job. <laughs> um, you're in, in math and... Yeah, uh, actuary. statistics, actuary science. Right. Uh, everyone's always told me that you have to follow a certain path when you're in college. You have to get an internship by this date, work at this date, so that way you can have a job by this date. And I never really tried following that just because I didn't want to be like a cookie-cutter you know, template. I, I always wanted to do something different. So freshman year, I worked for Purdue University in the summer camps for minority students. Then I got an internship, and then just a summer job. And last year, I was able to actually uh, backpack Europe. So I backpacked Europe for six weeks, just all over Western Europe, from London to Vienna, and then Wait, back. By yourself? Or with with a friend of mine from okay. Mortarboard. Okay. So it wasn't, I didn't want to work just because I wanted to do this, because I didn't think I'd be able to any other time. Sure. So all of those different things I've done, I mean, look really cool on a, on a resume, but I think with so many people that have followed the path that it's not really working out for me right now but um the plan is the plan was always to do some type of insurance consulting finance some kind of job with that but now uh i, I think i'm sw- shifting more towards the management side just because it might be broader it might be able to at least get my foot in the door with the company but if i can't find a job in the next 
two, three months, I'm going to apply to grad school. Okay. Um, and my dad thinks I'm crazy for it, but I'm not going to do anything of what I studied for in undergrad. I, I think with all the stuff that I've done here, all the involvement, all of the, the leadership development, all of the different programming and, and the involvement with the, the university itself, I want to go to a college or university for uh, higher education administration. I want to I want to become a dean of students. If okay. if I can't find a job, I think I'd be, I think it would suit me just because I love it so much. And, and you like working with the students, yeah, and, and you yeah. just enjoyed it, right? And everyone says it for me. It's like when I tell them that I'm thinking about doing that, like I thought that's what the original plan was. I didn't see you as anything else. So uh, <laughs> it, that might be the plan. I might end up one day being Dr. Rivera, dean of students for a university. We'll, we'll so. certainly sort of watch that. But are you um, going to take? Are you st have you had any interviews at all? Or kind of, uh, yeah, I've, I've I've worked with I, I've good. I've actually gotten offers from some companies, but they didn't seem as um, genuine as I, as I would have liked. A lot of the, the places were uh, commission based only and will only give you this, this, and this. It just didn't seem like what I really wanted to. I, I've kind of worked a little hard to, you know, just. You have to be comfortable with it. Right. Yeah, it's not, I don't want to be miserable from nine to five. If, I'm right. not going to enjoy it. So. And you don't want to stop, uh, start and then have to pull back because you really aren't right. you know, keen on it. So I, I'm, I'm looking for a job that it's still something I want to do. But if it doesn't work out, then I'm going to go to grad school, okay. become Sounds a dean good. of students. Yeah. Okay. Thank you very much, Miguel. I really appreciate this. It's Thanks for having nice. me. Thanks a lot. I got a couple. Did you get that form? I said I have.